Let's talk. Hello, welcome to Let's Talk. I'm Sally Gibney. How many of you have driven by Hemholtz Fine Arts Gallery and noticed that fabulous horse sculpture out front and wondered, where did that come from? Who created that? Well, my guest today is Rita D, and she is the artist who has created these fabulous, fabulous sculptures. Rita, thank you for coming. It's so good to have you here. Well, Sally, thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be here. Oh, it's, it's really exciting. Now, could you tell our audience just a little bit about yourself? Okay, I am a um, mother of five, uh -huh. married for 40 years to my husband, Tom, who uh -huh. uh, actually uh, is very active in the community in Bennington, running the hospital in, um, uh, in southern Vermont. And um, we live on a horse farm. Uh -huh. uh, our day begins at uh, 5.30 out in the barn, and it ends when the sun goes down. Wow. Um, and now that the sun goes down early, it ends later. <laughs> so uh, that is a big part of my day, and a big part, a big part of our family uh, life is caring for, riding, training, breeding horses. Yeah, and you've been involved in many other things. But today, let's focus on this. Now, how did you, your love of horses begin? Where did that start? It, it started way back. I mean, I've been drawing them since I was three. It, it's oh. been kind of a, a, a driving force, I guess you'd say, in my, in my life when I was younger. My parents finally broke down and bought my first horse when I was 12. And, had you ridden before that, before they bought the horse? Or? You know, my parents, <laughs> it's kind of funny, I should have ridden before that. Uh -huh. I only was able to ride on trail rides, and it was very intermittent. Uh -huh. So they felt you didn't ride and uh -huh. take lessons until you got a horse. Uh -huh. So they got me a horse when I was 12, and I have not, and that's basically when my riding life began. And ever since then, it has been uh, a constant, is the daily rides. And so how did you come to begin to even think about creating these sculptures? I was uh, going to Bard College in Annandale, New York, uh -huh. and taking courses toward my master's degree in art. And I was doing large scale paintings and drawings of horses. And I became very ill from working with the materials. Oh. And my professor at the time said to me, why don't you work with something that's a little more benign? Why don't you think about just doing, you know, working with paper or wood? Oh. And because my work had always been centered around horses, uh, I was down, we lived near the Hudson River, we were about a mile from the Hudson, so I began to uh, pick wood up from the Hudson and uh, begin constructing horses out of the wood, which were very similar to my drawings, actually. Wow. So that's kind of how it started. So you would just go down to the river and pick up all this driftwood and, and bring it home? Yes. And yes. It was, it's not exactly that easy just going down to the river because you have to walk along the track. The tra the tra it's not easy. It's not, a, it's not exactly a fun job. And uh, it can be a little scary at times. Oh, I even. would imagine. So uh, yeah, so that's what I did. Oh, and, wow. Uh, and how did your parents feel about you doing this? Or were they just a little bit? Not even well, aware. Well, at that time I was married and had, oh, okay. uh, you know, three kids. Uh -huh. So well, how did um, your husband feel? Yeah, about well, you he didn't, didn't <laughs> like the idea of me going down alone. So I uh -huh. usually had him or, or a friend uh -huh. or somebody with me. But um, but sometimes I needed a piece and I had to go down and get it. So yeah. it was nice living near the Hudson there because I could just bop down if I needed I something that was a particular shape and go look for it and find it and come back and use it. But um, so you'd come home with this wood and then how did you start? Um, Would you start? Like I that? have to start by figuring out um, the feeling I want to convey and the, the position that the horse is going to be in. Uh -huh. And I usually use the, my inspiration comes from the actual an actual horse, somebody a horse uh -huh. I know, uh, a horse in history, a horse um, that has passed away that we've had. Uh -huh. I mean, that's where I start. That's so I figure out the the gesture first. Uh -huh. And I, 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 I just begin working from there. So you, do you so, start like with a leg? Or I, begin start with a, I begin with legs. Uh -huh. So I'll start, I'll just kind of get the feeling of the, the four legs and work from there. Wow. Uh, and that's... You now, know. do you treat the wood before you start? Yes, yes. It's, I mean, I make sure it's dry mm -hmm. and very clean, uh, free of rot. Uh, and then we stain it. And then I begin to and construct it out of it. And, and that's how... Oh my go. gosh, it's, it just totally blows my mind. It's totally amazing. Let's talk about this beautiful creature here. Trail guy. Yeah. Yes. So, <clears throat> um, 
trail guide is an actual horse uh, who uh, is really was really quite an amazing horse. He was the last Army remount oh. horse <clears throat> to be on our Olympic team, and uh, so he has quite a history to come from the ranks of being a military horse to eventually becoming an Olympic horse. Wow! And uh, he was ridden uh, in the Olympics by um, Frank Chapeau and then by Bill Steinkraut. So he was actually uh, uh, that type of a level horse. And when he, so he had lived this long life and at the age of 26, he was at Madison Square Garden uh, on his final uh, exhibition competition, you might say, and jumping the second to last fence, he came to a, um, a large fence and he ended up crashing through it and died on the spot. Oh, wow. And uh, Bill Steinkraus was the, was the person on him at the time. And uh, basically, he, he died of heart failure when they did the autopsy. But I think that was what was so magnificent about this horse is that he just gave and gave and yeah. gave. And um, I mean, he was a real hero. Oh, of course. For, How did they, I mean, as a military horse, what did he do? Um, well, basically, military horses, I mean, they're, they're either used in, in combat. I don't know that he saw combat or that he was a remount in the process of, you uh -huh. know, if there had been, because uh, he was later, he was just after the war. Uh -huh. um, and so he was probably used to, you know, on whatever. marches and yeah. whatever, you know. And then I wonder how he went from doing that to becoming... I know, well, it's quite interesting because there was a time when most of our Olympic horses in, in, in any, like England, Germany, Ireland, they were military horses uh -huh. and they, they transferred into the Olympic ranks wow. before, you know, in the, in the old days. Mm -hmm. So, um, because a lot of the, the, the Olympic riders in those days were military men. Oh, you know? really? Of yeah. course. And, and I imagine there was quite a connection between the rider and the horse. It, oh, you know, yes. That must have been oh, yes. a very, yes. very Well, strong. there always is a, has to be a connection, and especially at any level. But at that level, you have to have a, a, this very close uh, connection to your horse uh -huh. because everything has to be done in a split second and almost like at a, in a, at the process of a thought. So uh -huh. you have to be very, very connected to that, to that horse. Yeah. So you would take, so you started working on him and you started with the legs, and you, you wanted him to be in a, a, an action shot, really. Well, this horse didn't start with the legs because oh. I couldn't. I start by building through the body, and ah. so he goes out from the center of the body. So it depends, I, I guess I have to be more clear on that, it depends on what the horse is doing, whether, I, whether he's standing on the ground or he's jumping a fence. Uh -huh. So when he's jumping a fence, I start with the center, and I just kind of, so it's, it's very frustrating because for a long time, it doesn't look like more than this mass that's wow. sitting on top of a, of a, of a rail. Uh -huh. I had to I construct a big, huge, like I call it a hitching post uh -huh. uh, made from big beams, and then I start building off that. Wow. So yeah, the legs are actually last. The ah. legs, because it goes this way. Because they go yeah. like that. And the head and the neck, I mean the neck and the head. And, the, and how do you fit these pieces together? I just can't. It, well, I, so I look body. upon it as a three-dimensional drawing. Uh -huh. So I really, I love drawing, and uh, so that's how I look upon it. Uh -huh. And some days I'm working very fast, so mm -hmm. I just pick pieces up and I almost put them in without thinking, and other days it takes a long time to find what I'm looking for. Uh -huh. So so that's how drawing is. You know, sometimes yeah. you can fly, and sometimes right. you just have to really... How long did it take you to how long? finish him? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, he, he was... Six months at least. Really? That's yeah. all? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I well, I mean, I don't include all the wood gathering and uh -huh. the finding. And I mean, some of these pieces, you know, I've had sitting around for a year and a half. Uh -huh. But, um, and then I have some pieces I've used in horses that I've had for 10 years. Wow. So I, it depends. It'll yeah. sit in the corner. So it's studio. always an ongoing kind of a project. Do you ever work on two of them at the same time? Or do you focus just on the one that you're working on? I just focus on the one. I have a yeah. very difficult time because I might find a really great piece and I'll say, oh gosh, which one am I gonna, who, can, who gets it? Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. So that, you know, I've decided to just keep it. Focused. So focused, yeah. Now there's a very spiritual piece to this, isn't it? I mean, this has a very spiritual meaning to you. Well, I mean, I, I have to say that my faith does inform my work. It, mm -hmm. it is a big part of my, what motivates me to want to do it. And, um, there is this very beautiful line in the 
Catholic blessing for animals. And it basically it says that animals are, he, God gives us animals so that we have a glimpse of paradise. Oh, I like that. And so I, I, I really think that's true because uh -huh. um, it, animals connect with people on, in a way that sometimes, you know, you just, you just need that connection. No, and they're so non-judgmental. They you know, are. They yes. just, they're angels. I believe yeah. they're angels your who. Dog, your dog's going to love you no matter what. You can mess up your day. And that dog's going to wag his tail. Yeah. You know what? That and, unconditional and, love that we all need and to teach yeah. us about unconditional love. Which right. Is really, yeah, uh, yeah. So you find that in horses. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Horses. Um, and it is a lot of what motivates me to want to do them. Because uh -huh. I want, I want to move that person who comes in to see them, who's having a bad day, and make them have a good day when, uh -huh. they, when they look at my work. I, uh -huh. I, want, to have an, I want them to be emotion, emotionally connected to it uh -huh. and moved more than intellectually in a way. I, I, I want it to be more of an emotional experience from the heart and the head. So that's what really... So you want anyone who is looking at one of these beautiful pieces to not just look at it, but to connect with it and to get a sense of something bigger than that. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, I think that's so, I, I mean, I just looking at them, um, I, certainly, I certainly get that from them. Now, some of the other horses that you've done. Well, they all are horses I know. Uh -huh. um, I have um, one that I did of our horse, Lavendale, who was my daughter's jumper, uh -huh. uh, took care of her for years. And I never worried about her on that horse. I always knew the horse was going to do the right thing, even if she did the wrong thing, my daughter, and, uh, and took great care of her. So I have a horse that I have, and she's in the lying down position because my daughter used to love to go sit with her in the stall when she was lying down. So I, I did her lying down, even though she was a ferocious jumper. And um, so that's Lavendale. I have a horse named Blaze. That is a horse that we got from a rescue uh, who was in his mother's belly oh. on a kill truck when a rescuer bought them her with him in her and so a friend of mine fold the mare and then gave me the colt uh -huh. so he, we oh. have him so I have that a little blaze. Um, I have um, a horse that and his blaze the blaze is, we, yeah the the we're, we're going to show our audience okay, blaze. blaze is yeah. behind us yeah. over there and then um, I have wavelength which is based off of one of uh, Lisa Cuman's photographs of oh. the beautiful stallion that she yeah. photographed so I do, be, I, I do have to have, and I have to know the horse. I'm, I have to feel like I know the horse I'm doing, mm -hmm. because then, then I Then you feel have a connection with it. <laughs> I know, it's just kind uh, of the way I, No, I, but I think that's what comes out in your work, is that, that personal connection, and also that spiritual connection that you have with each of these horses. It's, it's really uh, just so mind-boggling to me. Now tell us, where, where is he going? Well, uh, we, have, we were invited by the um, Longines Masters organizers of the, there's a Grand Slam in, in um, uh, the show jumping world. Ah. And so one of the legs of the Grand Slam is going to be in New York. So we were invited, the gallery, through, you know, through Lisa, um, at the gallery here, um, to bring Wavelength. And he's going to be positioned at the entry to the big event. Um, I mean, pardon me. Blade. <laughs> Trail guide. Trail is guide. Going to be uh, coming, and he's going to be positioned at the entry. Oh, how exciting is that? Yeah. yeah. So it's very exciting. Yeah. It's very exciting to be there. What does it take to move one of these these guys? Oh gosh, it's not easy. It's a nightmare, actually. I mean, this he has to be disconnected from the base, and we have carefully, very, very carefully, people who pick him up. Uh, we had like five of us, uh, and then he cannot be set down because he's meant to be elevated, so we have to move him to my flatbed trailer and put wooden slats to set him on, and then we string him off oh, wow. with springs and straps so he has an air ride. He's just gliding in the air in my open flatbed. Oh so my goodness, it so it has to be a nice day. <laughs> yes, it would be great if it is. Sometimes it's not, but... <laughs> But one of, great to be nice one of the things that impresses me so much about you is you do so much of this yourself. I mean, I saw you setting up, and I was like, you are right in there, moving around and doing all these different things, and it, it's just mind-boggling what you do. So you really are a hands-on 
kind of a person. And you leave a little piece of yourself in each horse, don't you? Yes, I feel like I do. <laughs> I, feel, I feel drained after each one that I'm done, uh -huh. I have to say. And uh, it, does, it does take a, it does feel like it takes a little bit out of me each time. Uh -huh. uh, so it, it, it is an emotionally draining experience for me, constructing each one of these. Uh -huh. And um, so, yeah, it and, is. And probably, I would expect that moving them on and having them go somewhere also is sort of like losing a part of yourself. I mean, you're excited that people are going to see them and enjoy them, but well, you know, do you I have, have to that say, feeling I, of... That's one area I learned when I was in school at, at Bard College. They were very big on teaching us to do a piece of artwork and totally disconnect from it when we were done, because in order to really? be better with your next piece, you have to be able to walk away from that and say, I can do better, you know? Really? So, yeah, you have to always, yeah, it, it motivates me to strive to do better and better each time. And it, I can't, I can't feel like, I can't feel the emotional, like, oh, I can't yeah. have that feeling. I have uh -huh. to say, okay, Dead. someone's going to love it and I'm really happy. And now I'm on to the next. Wow. So that's, that's, that's their, yeah, one time they had us actually build a sculpture out of material that was, um, that we could destroy at the end for the sole purpose of building it and then having it gone. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was tough. That yeah. was hard. That yeah. But, you know, I learned a lot from that. And I think that that's um, important yeah. to, to, because you want to always be able to strive for something. Mm -hmm. something it's more. also kind of a lesson in life, isn't it, too, that not, not to totally break away from everything, but to be able to go forward, you know, not right, to, yes. not yeah. to yeah. be bogged down, but to continue on and to right. go forward. Yeah, definitely, is, definitely. You know, which is really quite a lesson. Yeah, you, you have know. to learn from what you did. And, yeah. And, and actually, that's how you make your work better, because you, you can't, like if you're doing a painting, you can't have one part of it that you love, mm -hmm. and then be afraid to and it might not work with the rest. You might have to destroy that part to make the rest work. To make it better. So that's kind of how it is when, yeah. you know, I'm building these two. I have to just, yeah. So I'm happy let when somebody loves yeah. them and just they go to a go. new home. I'm happy. Yeah. 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 Now, is your, are your children, any of your children involved in this? Or are they part of they, it? They've all been involved in some way or another. Yes. Uh -huh. Either wood gathering, staining, moving. Uh -huh. um, having to take up my slack around the house when I'm working on a piece that I haven't uh -huh. finished, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, I would have to say it's a family experience that way because yeah. we everybody kind of pitches in, so I get it done. Uh -huh. And um, but everybody has their own talents in different directions. Yeah, which is exciting to see yeah, too. It yeah. is. Are it any is. of them horse people? My youngest daughter is a horse person. Yeah, uh -huh. so she is going full out into the business of, wow. of training and riding, yeah. Oh, wow, that's yeah. so great. So, so what is your next piece? What are you working on next? Well, the next idea I have, um, I would love to do several horses galloping with no feet on the ground, and I want to build a steel cube that they're suspended in. Oh, wow. So that's, but I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet. But that's why I, I want that feeling of motion. Uh huh. So that's one idea I have. Wow. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> that is no, really... I, I have some ideas. Uh, it uh -huh. has to, it has to, I don't know. I, I do have some ideas on how I'm going to do it, but I haven't uh, started a, uh, constructing the steel piece yet. The steel has to be, has to really work with being, it can't be a throwaway. It has to be integral to the part. So. To the, to the entire piece, so that's what I'm wow. working on. That's exciting. So I seem to remember that you have one of your horses down at the Welcome Center in Bennington. Could you tell us about that? Yes, yes, that's a very special piece. Um, the name of that horse is True Patriot, uh -huh. and I did it uh, to raise awareness of our soldiers uh -huh. and the sacrifices they make, and I also did it as, as a walk through history, so uh -huh. it has a lot of things that have happened throughout history. It includes quotes from um, George Washington, and um, uh, it has the Pledge of Allegiance. It has, it has a lot of different things in it. And the interesting thing about that horse is that every now and then I'll get an email from someone who's seen it. Um, so I just came in for a quick 10-minute stop, and I ended up staying for a half hour. And 
One woman said how it brought her to tears because she has two sons in the military and she understood what the sculpture mm. was saying. And the, the folks who, who man the Welcome Center tell me all the time, they say, I wish I had a camera that was up in the ceiling that could record yeah. the veterans when they come in yeah. and they read it and how some of them are actually brought to tears well, it's an, it's an acknowledgement to them of, it, it, of their service and what it means to us. It is, it is. You know, I, mean, I, that, I do feel that so much of what we have, a soldier has sacrificed and died for. I mean, sure. you know, they, they have. And so I do have several sculptures I've done mm -hmm. over the years that acknowledge that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's one of them that's at the Welcome Center. Wow, that's really neat. So. And so your work is touching people all over. I mean, I can't imagine the hundreds and people that have responded to what you've done and continue to respond to it. So it's such, you've been such a gift oh, to you. all of us and, and to everyone who gazes on these beautiful, beautiful pieces. Thank you. Thank and you. I, just, I just hope that you keep continuing to do this because it's such a gift. I mean, I come in here and I want to pet them. I want, <laughs> I want to be right there with them. They're absolutely wonderful. And um, is there anything else that you'd like to share about them or what, what they mean to you before we close? Um, I do them um, because I love the horse, the form of the horse. Mm -hmm. I, I love working with them. And for me, it's, it's a way to um, convey to others that feeling. Mm -hmm. So I'm, Which is wonderful, and it's such a gift. Thank you so much oh, for all you, you do. Thank it's you absolutely so. wonderful. Thanks. And thank you all for joining us. And please come to Hemholtz Fine Arts Gallery right here in Manchester, and you can gaze upon these wonderful, wonderful creatures and, um, and just, just take some time with them because it's amazing how they're going to touch you as they touch me. Thank you for joining us, and until next time, let's talk. Y las venderé Sé que te amo y me enriqueceré Si te vas con reservación del tren de las tres Ayuma, yo atravieso el canal veloz como el boomerang De la fortuna Y te presentaré a las ardillas del parque central sé que te amo y no me irá tan mal Sé que te amo y mi